Welcome to the March or Die show. My name is Jeremy Stonelecker. I am your host and so grateful to have you listening today. Looking forward to a fantastic show. I've got a great guest on. I know this is going to be interesting to you and beyond being simply interesting, it will be helpful and uh, I trust that you'll get a lot out of this conversation. Before we jump into that though, I want to remind you, please, if you have not yet, take some time to go over to YouTube and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I put a lot of content there with you in mind, doing my best to provide resources that you can use, that you can share out to others. Uh, this show would be one of those, but there's a lot of other content there. Many of you are listening to either the Mojo 5 uh, broadcast of this, or you're listening to the podcast version of this, and that is fantastic. I appreciate you doing that. But take some time. Go over to YouTube. Subscribe to my channel, Jeremy Stonlecker. You'll find my channel there. You can subscribe, hit the notification bell. That lets you know when content comes online. You'll be notified, and that will be great. Uh, and then you can go ahead and, of course, leave me a comment, share that content out, and hopefully enjoy it and uh, get some use out of that. That's why it is produced. Also, take some time to go to jeremystalnecker.com, jeremystalnecker.com. There you will find my blog, uh, so much uh, written content. Uh, is there as well. Uh, I love to do videos. I love to speak and record, but uh, also enjoy writing. You can find my content there, uh, as well as links to all of my social content. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find all of that at jeremystalnecker.com, and uh, I would encourage you to do that. Again, I'm thankful for our audience, thankful for the opportunity to produce content like this and have conversations like the one that you will hear in just a second uh, and would love to stay in touch with you. Uh, so much in this episode today. I don't want to spend a lot of time running up into the conversation. I just want to get to the conversation. But I will introduce our guest to you today. Dr. David Holmes is with me. And uh, man, we had a great, great conversation. Dr. Holmes is a sports physician who specializes in the prevention and management of non-surgical and post-surgical injuries and uh, for many years has focused primarily on professional athletes, working with many professional athletes uh, across the spectrum. Now uh, also dealing with and focusing on helping those who are in the special operations community of our military and really that's how we connected. Uh, he is um, in a lot of ways helping us as an organization, the Mighty Oaks Foundation, the organization that I work for, understand how we can implement uh, some of these strategies, some of these physical health strategies into helping the men and women that we help as we talk about trauma and all of the other issues that we've been dealing with. He's helping us to better understand how we can integrate these two. And this is why I wanted to talk to him. We often, uh, coming from where I come from, kind of a, a faith-based world, a Christian perspective, Christian worldview, uh, looking at the world through the lens of the Bible, if you will, uh, we sometimes do a good job of speaking to the issues that people are dealing with and trying to help them work through those things in the right way while neglecting the physical bodies that God created us with, that He has given to us as tools to be used. And we need to integrate those two. And uh, Dr. Holmes does a great job of explaining this. Um, I, I talk on this show often about how in life <laughs> we only have two choices when we come into conflict, when we deal with obstacles, when we have those challenges. We only have two choices. We can march or we can stay where we are and die. We can give up. I'll tell you this. If your body <laughs> has not been cared for, if you're not taking care of this vehicle that God has given to you, then when those obstacles come, when the trauma presents itself, when uh, the issues of life become overwhelming, it will become much more difficult for you to make the decision to press forward. And Dr. Holmes speaks to that uh, great conversation, and uh, I know that it will be a help to you. Please enjoy this conversation with Dr. David Holmes. David Holmes, thank you for joining me all the way from Las Vegas. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Uh, we, uh, we met a couple of weeks ago, I guess. It wasn't that long ago at a Mighty Oaks Foundation program for uh, veterans and first responders and got to know you a little bit there. Um, your interest in the military uh, is, uh, is awesome. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, folks know kind of who you are and what you're involved in, but let's start by talking about how someone gets into uh, sports medicine. What, what was your path to get to the place where now you're working with high-level athletes and uh, special operators in the United States military and a lot of other folks? How, how do you come to this place? It seems like an unusual kind of niche. Yeah, it's, uh, 
you know, I, I guess looking back at it, it's a, it's a whole lot of coincidences, if you will. And, <laughs> and, and I don't believe in coincidence. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's been God led yeah. um, since the beginning, whether I knew it or not. Um, and so, I, you know, I was, I was a football player. Everything I wanted to do in, in high school was play football. I was in track just to get faster for football. Everything right. was football. Yeah. Uh, went to the University of Minnesota uh, and uh, went to walk on uh, and ended up blowing out my knee in a non-football related uh, injury. Uh, wrapped it around a pole while I was snowboarding. Sure. <laughs> uh, which at the time was pretty devastating. I yeah. ended up kind of injured again, but that's actually uh, my wife and I's first date. So uh, you know, things, things <laughs> so, have a way of working out. So a win and a loss, that bittersweet thing, right? That's exactly it. So um, after that, you know, after I blew out my knee, I knew I wanted to be involved in sports. Uh, I just didn't know how. Yeah. Uh, and so I knew that uh, being an orthopedic surgeon, uh, you got to work on athletes, but uh, you only got to work on them for a very short period of time. Uh, and they were usually unconscious when you got to, uh, when you got to do your work. So um, I ended up, uh, chatting with a chiropractor and, and, uh, I said, okay, well, that seems, seems like a cool thing to do. And, uh, ended up going to school, graduating from there and, uh, realized that chiropractic is a, is a great tool. Uh, but when it came to the toolbox, I needed to deal with the guys that I wanted to deal with. Uh, I needed a lot more. Yeah. So I ended up going, uh, doing some a three-year program in sports medicine, doing my EMT, doing my CSCS, mm. all these things that ended up making me go to school just as long as if I would have gone as right. an orthopedic <laughs> surgeon. But, right. uh, but yeah, so I got out and, and shortly after, within, I think within a year and a half, uh, Larry Fitzgerald throws a camp uh, for, or he used to throw a camp, I should say, for a lot of professional athletes uh, in the league. There'd be a bunch of wide receivers and cornerbacks and defensive backs that would come out. Uh, and I knew the trainer um, who allowed me to come out and work out with them. Uh, Cause back then I still had some skill at least. Uh, and so one of the guys got hurt there uh, from Green Bay and I said, hey doc, can you take a look at him? I looked at him, worked on him. He felt great, got up and ran. Uh, and then he asked me to see him that week. I said, cool. He asked me to uh, come into Green Bay and I went in Green Bay, and that's how it all got started. Wow, that's incredible! Yeah, yeah what a journey, um, man. There's so much there, and I, you know, I've heard kind of an expanded version of your story, which is, uh, again, as you mentioned, it's God ordained moments throughout your life that brought you to this place. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate about you, and you know, I met you in person, like I said, a couple of weeks ago, but we've been communicating for a while. You've been uh, working with folks on our staff, and and really, what we're trying to do is develop a program of wellness for the men and women who come through one of our programs. And we work with post-traumatic stress and trauma and all of these things. We approach all of that from a faith perspective. And one of the pieces that is, is often missing when you're trying to heal, you know, spiritual wounds or uh, a lot of the, the psychological damage that's done through combat and just service to your country. Uh, one of the aspects that is often missing or overlooked is the physical aspect. And I'd, I'd really like to talk about that. But before we talk about the integration of those, uh, let's talk about your faith story a little bit, because I think it's, it's key <laughs> to what you're doing right now. You could continue working with athletes. You could continue doing some of those things. But you've decided you'll, you'll also work with those who uh, are trying to move forward in their lives. And, uh, man, that's a, that's a big switch and a big step. Can you talk about yeah. your faith journey and what brought you to kind of that decision, that place where you find yourself right now? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, um, uh, you know, I, I had a, a a great childhood. You know, I, I can't say anything anything against it. Um, we, my parents, uh, brought us to church. Uh, you know, uh, we did the whole confirmation thing. We did everything. Uh, a bunch of my, you know, I grew up in a small town, uh, Princeton, Minnesota. Uh, in you know, it's, it's the Bible belt of the North, right? So, you know, everybody that I think we had uh, at one time, 23 churches in a town of wow. 4,000 people. Wow. No kidding. Uh, yeah. So it was, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it surrounds you, your friends, everybody, everybody um, goes to church and everything. Oh, wow. um, you know, so that kind of started out uh, how, how I, you know, got known um, or got closer to Christ. Um, some of my very best friends also, you know, one of them was a military chaplain and, uh, and now is a, uh, a pastor in, in Minneapolis. And so, 
it, it's kind of always been there. I, I will say this, however, though, you know, like most of us, uh, that kind of ebbs and flows uh, during your during your years uh, in college and everything like that. Um, but one of the things that kind of really uh, brought me to a place where there's an undeniable um, presence in my life that could that can you know I guess control anything. Uh, and, and it was when my dad was uh, passing away. So my dad died of cancer. Um, and, you know, I tell people, I say, listen, I'm, I'm a scientist by nature. You know, I went to, I went to undergraduate work and, and, and most people find this very, very um, confusing, but I went to undergraduate uh, degree in, at the University of Minnesota for evolutionary biology. Wow. Uh, I was probably the only person on the campus taking evolutionary biology and as well as, you know, history of the New Testament and all of these types <laughs> of classes. Um, because my thing is, it's kind of like the, uh, the scientists of old. Uh, I don't, I want to understand the way the world is and the way the human body is and everything like that. Uh, not so I can disprove God, but so I can understand what he did. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so, you know, we, we get to this point where um, uh, I tell people that there's a difference, that the only difference between a scientist and a believer is that a scientist doesn't want to accept that what they can't understand is controlled by somebody else. Right, right, right. That, that's the only that's the only difference. And so we is I don't know, it was about six years ago and my father I was passing away and, and I and I, you know, I got down on my knees, literally got down on my knees and prayed a prayer that asked just so I could speak to him again, because he was completely out of it, uh, didn't have any awareness really of what was going on. Uh, and I said, I just want to talk to him again. You know, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't know how to be a man. Right. Yeah. How, how does that work? Yeah. Uh, and so uh, I said, I just want to talk to him again. Uh, and the very next day, uh, he was completely coherent. Wow. We talk, we prayed. Uh, you know, I asked him all the questions I needed to ask. Uh, and then the very next day, he was uh, completely out of it again. And so, you know, if that wasn't enough to tell me uh, and to really, <laughs> you know, get me get me um uh locked in was that about a it was probably about a week week and a half later i said you know i i know i already prayed this prayer and i know you already did it for me uh but please give me one more opportunity to speak with him uh and literally the very next day uh he was coherent for the whole entire first part of the uh first part of the morning up until afternoon uh we prayed we did all that uh and then he went he went away and within a couple of days he was he passed away. Wow. And so the, the power of that, um, you know, a lot of people uh, would say, you know, the power of that is, 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 you know, that feeling that everything that happened and that's true. But what I like to tell people also is that the power of that is that statistically speaking mm. for me to be able to pray, pray a very specific prayer right, and have that answered in a duration that was the very next day. And then to pray that same exact prayer and then have it happen again the very next day. Yeah. Uh, this just, you know, the, the probability of that happening is, you know, you could get hit by lightning hundred <laughs> times over uh, and it'd still be less than that. So, right. you know, scientifically speaking, that's one of those things where I try and tell people, I'd say, listen, you can't, you cannot prove, you cannot disprove, you cannot even come close to trying to figure out how that happened. Uh, and so therefore you at least have to be open to the fact that, Hey, maybe there's something out there that, uh, has our best interests in, in, you know, in hand. Why do you think this, this isn't really the topic of our conversation, but just in that, why do you think that so many scientists and physicians have such a hard time with the idea that there is a creator? I mean, they're not even open to the, to the thought that it's even a possibility. Why, why is that? Is it just a, as a human, I don't want to acknowledge there's an authority over me or is it is it deeper than that yeah i think it's i i i don't think it's um i don't think it has you know maybe it does for some people the authority but i think when it comes to science i think it's actually more of a uh this um and i don't want to call it an arrogance but this this kind of idea that we can explain anything that goes sure. on in our life right right um you know and in, in in, that's why I said I like the kind of there's there's many scientists of old um, that 
were in it to try and figure out what had got going on. And, yeah. and you yeah. know, in, in the philosophy, the philosophy of understanding that you can't understand something <laughs> right, is really the deepest type of science there is. Uh, when you get into the into the 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 realm of the unknown and you continue to try and figure it out, but you can never answer that question of well what became what came before that. Uh, then it goes to the fact is is that scientifically, and I like to tell people I say if you look at it, a scientist cannot be an atheist. If you follow the scientific method, you cannot be an atheist. The the the, the most you could be is an agnostic. Because if you cannot prove nor disprove right. the existence of God, right. you have to then therefore be open to the fact that there yeah. is one. Yeah. Uh, and then it comes into us. Now we actually have our eyes open and see uh, see those interactions that um, are beyond science. After that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a tough one for me to to get my mind around. Um, I'm not a smart guy. I'm certainly not a scientist. So um, sometimes I struggle with that because you're right. When you go back historically to some of the most notable early scientists and physicians and, you know, folks who really gave us a lot of the breakthroughs in medicine. A lot of those were Christian people who, <laughs> who believe that uh, God gave us a mind to use, to understand, to investigate and uh, that was a gift. And it's it's interesting to see very, very intelligent people go, oh, no, that's not even a possibility. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that we don't know history. Um, right. Uh, you know, which is is part of a, a larger problem we have going on. But uh, if you look at it, even um, uh, if you read the letters that uh, that Charles Darwin wrote to students, mm. uh, he literally wrote and he, he didn't deny the existence of a God. He, you know, he, he basically said uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't, sure. uh, but it seems highly unlikely uh, that all of this could be poof, right? Uh, you know, from from a, a random chance, I should say. Uh, and so, you know, same thing, Louis Pasteur. Same thing. Uh, the head of the Human Genome Product Project right now is actually a Christian. Mm. Um, and so there are there are those scientists who I think um, can understand that um, you know not taking into account, not actually studying the whole realm of possibility uh, makes you makes you less scientific. Right. Uh, and, and I think back in the day, they, you know, it was inundated in culture is everything. And so you, you that interplay of religion and science was always there. Uh, and, you know, in a secular environment, we try and separate those. Right. Uh, but when we separate those, we actually limit our ability to to understand true science. Yeah. It's crazy because you wonder about uh, some of these, you know, uber intelligent folks, these researchers who are ignoring evidence that might lead them to a different conclusion because they're Correct. just completely disregarding that that Correct. God is even possible. So they're coming to the wrong conclusions um, based on that. Uh, fascinating. As a Christian, <laughs> um, how is your view towards, you know, will not medicine broadly, but uh, even the work that you do in, in, uh, you know, working with athletes and working with just the human body, how is your view different than perhaps some of your peers or other people who would come from a different approach? Yeah, I think, I think, um, I, I think it's, it's a secular view versus a, uh, a Christian view. And, and that doesn't mean Christian views are not scientific. Right. Uh, it just means that right. a secular view is going to limit the, I guess, the data points, if you will, uh, in which they can draw upon. And, and I know that might be kind of a controversial statement, but it's the absolute truth. If you go and you look, and one thing that scientists really don't like is they don't like to use uh, case studies uh, to make conclusions uh, because case studies don't have a high enough you know, um, sample size to make any real conclusions, they say unless you have enough case studies together that can, that can kind of start to show a trend. And the thing about it is, is that with Christians and most Christians, whether Christian doctors or Christian, everybody who've had experiences that are unexplainable, such as mine, where the, the ability to try and say that it was by coincidence is just, you know, too far, uh, too far out there. Uh, those are all case studies. Those are all one-offs and they've never been accumulated mm -hmm. into a, a, a large enough sample size where we can say, okay, well, let's look at these and let's throw out the ones that, you know, we can't, 
we can't, uh, that, that may seem uh, non-scientific, but let's keep the ones in there that are, hey, we literally can't figure out why this was, and we can show some sort of causation. Yeah. Um, we don't know what the causation is, uh, but we can some so show some sort of causation because we don't need to, and, and this is my opinion, uh, I, like, I like to uh, you know, do apologetics from an evolutionary point of view uh, because I, I use it, I guess, against them, if you will. I say, listen, um, you know, all we need to know is that the everything is a theory, right? And every fact is based off of a theory. Yep. And so if we disprove a theory, it actually throws our whole system um, out of whack. And so I look at it and I say, okay, if we were to put together enough kind of case studies to make a sample size large enough to at least say, hey, listen, uh, there has to be something out there that you guys need to then therefore look into, add this to your, to your, uh, your data set. Uh, then I think now we're starting to talk, whereas it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're bringing back that, you know, the, the religion back into the science, um, not in a way to, like I said, try and force it and tell people, hey, God exists and you, you have to understand right. that because of this, right. but to say, Hey, listen, just question, question your own theory. Yeah, man, that's good. Um, w one of the things that when I look at the difference between, you know, secular and Christian, um, often I think one of the dividing lines is the goal. What are mm -hmm. we actually trying to accomplish? Uh, I, I, I'm a big believer in fitness and, and exercise and taking care of your body. Um, I'm not always very good at it, but I work hard, <laughs> work hard at it. Um, and, and this is, you know, to me, this is where a lot of the people who might fall into the world that I would like to inhabit, you know, with um, athletes and being very physical and a lot of the things that we do, if you take out the faith aspect or you take out mm -hmm. the, the Christian worldview aspect, you might conclude that you do all of those things so that you have a better quality of life so that you can accomplish whatever your goals are until you die <laughs> um, so that you're not miserable in the last few years of your life, whatever. There are a lot of ways to frame that. But as a Christian, my goal is to fully be what God created me to be. That's it. I mean, that should sum it all up. And so when I look at taking care of my body, when I look at, you know, exercising and doing the things that I do, um, although you hopefully you enjoy those, and you can have hobbies and all that, but but really the goal should be so that you are physically equipped to do what God has created you to do. And um, when you and I were talking about this, um, you know, several weeks ago, the integration of faith and the physical taking care of our bodies. Um, you, you made some great points in that. Talk about just the importance of that, because I think there are so many Christian people, good people um, who are absolutely not taking care of their bodies and they'll dismiss it in some trite, silly way mm -hmm. as, well, you know, God sees the inside, not the outside, all, all these silly things we say, right? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. I have a relationship with God. And I wonder, this is me and someone who's listening is going to get upset. Um, I, I wonder how much you actually care about doing what God wants you to do. If you are unwilling to uh, walk around your block three times a week or, you know, do whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the integration of, of those two things? I just did for a long time and I shouldn't have, but <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, take no, it from it, there. You're the actual yeah. doctor. Uh, I, I, I will say this. Um, I mean, I agree with you. Uh, you know, there's in, and, and I'm gonna excuse my swipe over here on my screen, but uh, you know, it, it says it straight in Corinthians, you know, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy right. Spirit within you from who uh, you have from God? Right. You are not your own. You were bought for a price. Uh, so glorify your, uh, so glorify God in your body. Um, you know, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. He gets into it later, you know. Uh, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all in the glory of God. Right. Uh, and so... My thing is, 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 you know, we can say all we want. We, Hey, you know, uh, this world, this body is temporary. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is. And, and, and it matters what our everlasting soul and everything, which is all true. Uh, but I, we've been tasked yeah. with making disciples on this, on this right. earth. Right. Um, and to do that, we have to be physically capable of doing that. Yeah. Um, if we aren't, if we're if we're bogged down by our own pains, uh, if we're not able to uh, be healthy enough to actually go out and meet people or whatever it may be, uh, we're not we're not completing that goal 
um, like we should. And, and, and so, you know, I, I think that a couple of things in like, people are going to get mad at me now as well. <laughs> well, it's better they're mad at you than me. So. <laughs> exactly. A, a couple of things is, is that, um, you know, we have to think of it this way, you know, when you're on an airplane uh, and they're talking and telling you if the oxygen mask dropped down, right? The first yeah. thing you're supposed to do put your own mask on first. Why? Because if you don't, you might pass out and not be any good to anybody else. Uh, and so we need to look at it. You know, people look at that and say, okay, I need to take, you know, my spiritual health. I need to take my mental health. I need to take all this first so I can be better for other people. Well, the same thing goes with physical health. Yeah. Um, you know, my dad was, a, it was an amazing guy. Uh, he, he is, he uh, is for me, uh, the model um, other than, Jesus Christ, right? Because that is the absolute model of a man. Uh, but as a as a father, uh, you know, on, on this earth, my dad was was an amazing guy. Uh, but my dad, you know, he got diabetes when he was in his 30s. The diabetes led to kidney failure. Uh, he had a kidney transplant, which had some complications, and it led to another 20 years. Which you know, uh, praise God that we had him to be alive. Uh, but it wasn't. Um, there's so much more he could have done, right. uh, you know, physically uh, to be out and do all those kind of things uh, to help people. You know, and I would argue to a certain degree that however my dad became a much stronger person and a much uh, better Christian following that. But uh, I would have liked to see both of those happen at one time. Sure. Two things can be true at the same time. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's at the end of the day, if we aren't taking care of ourselves, then we're being a little bit selfish. Mm. Mm. And, and that sounds weird because you would think that it's selfish to take the time out for yourself and, and make sure you're doing things be sometimes before you do things for others. But again, if you don't do them for yourself, you're not going to be able to help others. Uh, and if you're physically bogged down by pain or whatever it may be, I mean, are you going to have the attitude of gratitude to want to be able to help people out? Yeah. Uh, that's a real thing. Uh, and plus, I mean, God gave us this world to have, to enjoy. It. Um, you know, I, I think it's in California, a group of seven seventh day Adventists are one of the uh, groups in the world of centenarians. So we have different groups of centenarians around the world, uh, Japan, um, some, somewhere in Italy, I believe, but also this little community in California. Hmm. Uh, and the reason is, is because they incorporate health as a, as a central aspect or one of the central aspects into their faith right? Um, because of that same reason. You need to be healthy so you can be out and preaching the word, yeah. uh, however that may be. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I've had the conversation several times with pastors and other ministry leaders about the difference between being called and being qualified. Yeah. And unfortunately, I feel like there are a lot of people God has called to specific work and specific ministry who um, aren't qualified because they have disqualified themselves. They haven't taken care of themselves. Yeah. And, uh, what a shame that is. I, I just can't even imagine knowing that God wants me to do something, but not being able physically to, to accomplish that. Yeah. Yeah. Think of it. I, I, I often think of it like this, you know, it's, it's, it, we, and we talked about this uh, heavily uh, at the Mighty Oaks uh, program is that, um, you know, God has a plan and, and God puts forth uh, the things that are, kind of going to lead us along that but we have the choice whether to to do that or to not do that we have right. the choice on whether we make the right decision or not uh in each one of those choices then makes it so either we're following god's path or we're not well, it's the same thing every time we put something in our mouth um if if we don't make the right choice we not we might not be qualified physically than to do the work that God's put in front, in front of us. Yeah. So it is our choice on whether we, we accept our destiny. Uh, and part, a big part of that comes from, from health. Can you talk about the relationship between uh, physical health and mental health? And, and you know, a lot of the folks that, that I deal with for sure and that you deal with are struggling in, with some degree of trauma or just something else is going on in their life that leads to bad decisions that, that leads to yeah. maybe spiraling out of control. And we're trying yeah. to pull those folks back. Uh, what's the connection between your physical health and your mental health? Well, I mean, other than everybody knows that if you are angry, if you're depressed, if you're all these type of things, you have less motivation, 
right? For most of those things, you know, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, you know, everybody knows that type of stuff, but what it gets down to into it, um, you know, scientifically, uh, there's a, there's a very high correlation between chronic pain and depression, mm. you know? And so every time, uh, there's kind of two schools of thought, uh, in modern day medicine. One is, is that your chemicals, uh, change your behaviors. And another is that your behaviors change your chemicals. Right. Uh, and I would argue it's both, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, you, can, you can make both sides work, right? If you change your behavior, you can absolutely change your chemical makeup. And if you change your chemical makeup, we know from medication, you can change your behavior. Yeah. Uh, and so when it gets to it, um, you know, chronic pain leads to depression in a high, high correlation. Uh, depression has a high, high correlation towards suicide. So we can go A to B to C. Sure. There's going to be a subset of a subset of those people that will make it all the way through, right? If we have three, bo if we have three, two boxes and the last box is, yeah. is suicide, right? There's going to be some that'll fall out on either one, but there will be a certain subset that makes it all the way through. Mm. And that's, that's what we, you know, that's the true importance of why physical health is so important when it comes to mental health. Because at the end of the day, we're all trying to do two things. We're trying to save people's lives and we're trying to save people's souls, right? And without saving their life, we mm. can't save their soul sure. sometimes. Sure. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things where um, chemically, uh, so there's something called like, there's negative feedback loops and there's positive feedback loops. And so a negative feedback loop means that when you increase a certain amount of uh, chemical in the body, it's going to create a stopping of whatever that's doing. So you get too much in there. So your body says that's enough. And it's going to cut off that mechanism from making more. Yeah. Or there's a positive feedback loop where uh, you have some in there. So it sees that it needs more and it creates more and it creates more. So our bodies are kind of a, uh, a bunch of those loops. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, the, the mental health is, is the same type of thing. So that negative feedback loop or the positive feedback loop, if you keep having negative thoughts, right, those negative thoughts lead to change in chemical makeup, those change that change in chemical makeup then leads to other things that happen in your body. Uh, and pain is literally just a, a, a sensor in your body. It's, it's nerves firing, you know, uh, that cause the pain receptors to go off. Uh, and, and so literally it's just your body telling you not to do something because it thinks it might get injured. Uh, but if you keep it in that cycle, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to desensitize those. So it takes more and more to get that, that, that kind of that fix, if you will. And so we get in this chronic pain cycle. Uh, and, and from there, it just leads to all sorts of chemical yeah. change in the brain. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> taking care of your body. It's important for just overall, you know, health in your life. So you feel good, but for mental health, extremely important. Uh, maybe yeah. the thing that keeps a person from, you know, coming to the end of that chain of, of boxes, as you mentioned, um, as a person of faith that believes that God has a plan for our lives, extremely important. Our body is the vehicle that allows us to do that. So why is it then that people don't do a better job of taking care of themselves? <laughs> and I'm sure you've spent many, many hours trying to convince people yeah. they need to do better. Uh, why don't people take care of themselves, understanding what's at stake? So I think two, two groups of reasons. Um, the first group is, is that you can know what to do, but not how to do it. Right. And I think that right. that's, that is a very important distinction in this because it's like, man, you need to stretch. <laughs> okay. You know, I, you know how many people have said, Oh yeah, I foam roll all the time. Uh, that's not stretching. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> These are saying. different things. Yeah. Those are different things. And so, you know, knowing what to do and knowing how to do it are two completely different sure. things. And so if we can, if we can educate people and not, not only educate people, but um, uh, if we can, if we can give the people the knowledge, if, if it becomes their own, they truly understand it. So it becomes theirs, then it becomes a part of their life. Right. Uh, and that's one of the big things that I try and do is I say, listen, I, I don't want to tell you what to do. I don't want to tell you how to stretch. I want to show you and, 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 and teach you what those muscles are, 
why they can cause certain problems, whether it be in your low back with your hip flexors and your hamstrings and your glutes, uh, whether it be in your neck with your upper traps and, and everything like that. I want to teach you why when those things get tight, they cause the damage to the discs and everything that's within. Yeah. Once you understand that, then you understand the, the gravity of the situation. If I don't do this, I will have a problem. And then once we understand that information, then we tell you, show you how to do it. So now it becomes yours. Uh, you know, CrossFit is a great example of that. They build a community uh, of people who, who want to learn more and more and more. Uh, and so they, they develop this kind of, um, this basis of, of people who understand uh, what it is they're trying to accomplish and they understand how to do it. Uh, and then all these CrossFitters are going to hate me and then they overdo it and they get themselves hurt. So. <laughs> and then they come and see you, right? <laughs> exactly. But, uh, and then I think the second thing, so big, 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 right? And, and I think people say, oh, they're just lazy, right? No, right? There's a lot. So, yes, some people are just lazy, but right. no, knowing how to do something sure. and why, uh, those are, are really big things that we need to do a better job of showing people, yeah. which, is, which is why I love the opportunity here with Mighty Oaks. Um, and I also love the opportunity, you know, with when it comes to, say, like I said, the church out in uh, California. It becomes part of their of their culture. It's a lifestyle issue. It's a lifestyle issue. Yeah. And then I think the second part of it is is kind of all of those things that we talk about in Mighty Oaks, right? Character, discipline, um, uh, margin, all of those things. Because uh, it takes it takes uh, yeah. a character. It's a character trait to say I'm going to get up and I'm going to work out, or I'm going to do this. You know, pretty much routinely all the time it, it takes character and discipline because it has to become part of who you are yeah. and then you have to be disciplined in doing it and then you have to have that you have to understand your priorities and make it a priority otherwise you won't have the margin for it and i think that's a big thing people i don't have time yeah you don't have time because yeah. your priorities are are thrown off and if you truly knew that staying healthy and i guess here's a, a better way to put it if you knew that in your 60s and 70s and potentially 80s that you were going to be in you, you could actually tell right now that you're going to be in chronic pain you were going to have all these diseases you were going to have everything i think it would change a lot of people's minds and so that's why you know when it's easy to do the things um when they're right in front of you yeah. but when you're looking out well that's 20 years 20 yeah. years away <laughs> what you do right now affects your next 10 years and what you do in 10 years affects, you know, as, as we get older. So if you're, if you're in your thirties, what you do in your thirties affects your forties into your fifties, what you do in your forties affects through your sixties, mm, yeah. what you do in your fifties affects the rest of your life yeah. because it, it starts to accelerate after that point. And so I think that, I think that those are the types of things that we need to do. We need to say it's, you know, it's a character trait to take care of your body uh, for God. Right. It's a godly trait. Yeah, man, that's good. It's, it's funny how um, in a world that is so pessimistic, I mean, everybody's negative all the time. The only area we're actually optimistic about is our own personal future. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Uh, the world Everything. is falling apart. I'm, I'm, you know, hiding under my bed all the time. What's going to happen next? But I'm sure my body will be fine in my 70s. It'll and be 80s. fine. It'll, it'll be, be fine. <laughs> yeah. And that, 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 that little pain I had for the last three months, it'll be fine. Don't it'll worry. go away. Yeah, it'll go away. There's no reason to worry about it. Yeah. I, um, I, will, I will let the, I will let the audience know right now. We are not children anymore. If it, the children, things will go away in a week. They'll be fine, right? If right. it doesn't go right. away in a week or two as an adult, it's probably not going away for a while. Right. It's going to be with you for the rest, for the rest of your <laughs> life. Um, is it ever too late to start? Uh, you know, a lot of, particularly in the veteran community, a lot of veterans, before they realize this is not going away, they're in their 40s or 50s. Some, yep. you know, we have Vietnam veterans. We've had Korean War veterans come to our programs. Is it ever too late to start getting your, your health uh, on track? Yeah, absolutely not. Um, I mean, I guess you, you asked the question, is it ever too late to accept Jesus? No. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's never too late. Uh, because the thing is, is can your tomorrow be better than your today? Mm -hmm. Right? And, and that's the real question. And so 
Um, I like to tell, you know, when I work with uh, uh, military guys, you know, especially the guys within the special operations, um, I try and tell them, I say, listen, uh, we're going to bring you back in age by years because the way they feel right now is older than somebody of their, of their normal age, yeah. right? So yeah. if you look at a, a normal person walking around, they're going to feel much better than somebody who's been beat up by the military for a long period of time. So we're going to bring you back in years when we do it. Um, and then we can look at it as the more injury you get, the more accelerated your injuries become. And so it, it, injuries kind of beget injuries because they always throw compensations into the mix. One injury makes you compensate over to this side, which then creates its own problem, which then causes another one. And so if we can slow down that acceleration, no matter what point you are, Right? That means that you're going to level off on how much you're getting injured and how much pain you're having. And then if we can level off, then it gives a good chance that we can then start the down, kind of the downward slope of that uh, to make you feel better day in and day out. And, and again, right, it, it comes in as, do you want to feel better tomorrow than you did today? So start now. Yeah. You know, it, like, like, uh, like they say, right? If what you're doing right now isn't working, <laughs> right. try something new. Right. Yeah, that's, a, that's one of our Mighty Oak sayings. Um, yeah. And it applies just about everywhere in life. We look at ourselves and go, man, I feel terrible. Why do I feel so terrible? Well, take your hand out of the chip bag and <laughs> start exercising. See if that makes a difference first. Yep. Try exactly. something new. Um, for those that would be you know, listening and they're motivated, I, I get it. Um, I need to do that. Yes, knowledge has been a problem for me. Motivation perhaps has been a problem for me where would you tell someone to begin? And, you know, if they were physically where you are, you could walk them through, you know, yep. I'm sure a process, but you're on the phone with somebody trying to help them. Where would you tell them to start? Where does this all begin for someone that wants to do right? Doesn't know how. Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a, I have a saying, add, add, don't subtract. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very simple. Um, uh, subtracting from your life kind of stinks, right? It, it's, it's hard. Right. I don't, I, um, I, I don't want to, uh, you know, get fat. So I'm going to cut out donuts or cut out right. this or right, cut right, out right. that. Yep. Uh, it, it becomes hard. And yep. so I tell people, add, don't subtract. And what I mean by that is, it's all I want you to do is add something healthy to your day and do it first. So let's say you're eating uh, and you know, you're going to have a, a pizza, you're going to have pizza or a burger or, or, you know, whatever it is that, you know, a bag of Cheetos. Right. Um, I just say, listen, take some vegetables or take a salad and a glass of water and add that to each one of your meals and do it first. Because what you're going to notice is, is that you're going to eat that salad, you're going to drink that water, and two things are going to happen. One, physically, physiologically, you're going to have less room for the bad stuff. So that's, that's kind of a benefit. Uh, number two is, is that the more of those little things that you add the less room you have even in your mind for adding the bad stuff. And so, well, you know, I'm doing pretty good. I'm adding these, the salad. I've, I've had salad every, every single meal. All right. You know, maybe I'll add something else and you add something else that's healthy and you add another thing that's yeah. healthy. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you have no time to do the, to do the unhealthy things or no urge to do them. Um, and so I like to tell people, if you have, a, you have a, a glass of oil and I poured water in it, those two, those two things separate, right? And if I keep pouring water into this glass of oil, all of a sudden, all of this oil is going to go out and I didn't subtract anything. All I did was add. And so that's kind of where to start, right? If you want to lift weights, don't do what most people do and do too much too quickly. Right. Oh yeah, man. I haven't lifted weights in 10 years. So I right. went out and did a CrossFit wad, right? Again, nothing against CrossFit, <laughs> you know, but that's not the thing to do when you first start out. Right. So you, you add one thing, Hey, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to stretch, which would be my recommendation mm -hmm. because maintenance, uh, maintaining your vehicle is a good way to make sure your vehicle runs well when you want to use it. Um, and so start out by stretching or start out by um, doing yoga or Pilates or something like that. And just add it in. And it doesn't need to be a lot, right? Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes will turn into 10. We'll turn into all that. So build like that. 
That's uh, man, what a great principle. I do uh, appreciate that you're using stretching for every illustration since I told you that I don't stretch when I, uh, when I exercise. So uh, I, I got the message. I will <laughs> I'll start, I'll start stretching. Uh, man, that principle is so good though. Add, don't subtract because you're exactly right. When people think about getting their diet under mm -hmm. control, it's like, oh man, I'd have to cut out everything. I'm going to have to like, light yeah. my pantry on fire and start over again. Right. But uh, do the, do the good thing first and then see what you have left. And I think your body responds to that, right? It, it wants the good fuel anyhow, and, and exercises the same way. Um, that's just a good life principle though. Yeah. You know, I, I'm yelling at my kids all the time for social media and being on their phones and all that stuff. But uh, really it's before you do any of that, why don't right. you start by reading your Bible? Why don't you start by, you know, exercising? And then yeah. if you have time and feel like it, um, man, that's awesome. What a great principle. Um, man, so much I could talk to you about, uh, but I uh, really appreciate this. Uh, you have a couple of businesses um, and a lot of resources available for folks. For those who are listening that, that want to connect with you, follow you, or just learn from you, where, where should they start? <laughs> uh, that's, that's actually pretty hard. Um, <laughs> uh, I, because of the, the, the people that I deal with, right, I only work with three major groups. I work with professional athletes. I work with... Um, uh, ex executives and, and entertainers. And then I work with uh, people within the military, specifically uh, a lot with the special operations community. I, I, I'm not a social media guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, I, I, it's, that's not who I am. I, I enjoy um, uh, being that guy who comes in, helps people and and, and let God do the talk, I guess. And there's nothing wrong with that. You're probably happier for not yeah, attending on much, social media all the time. Right. Uh, so what I would say to them is that uh, I, I do have a website coming. Uh, and so this website is being tailor built uh, to give the information, like I talked about earlier, not just here's a stretch, do a stretch. Yeah. Here is the anatomy behind the stretch. Here is why you do the stretch. And then here is how you do the stretch right. uh, and, and, and building up the information on, on people. So it becomes theirs. I want them to be able to own this because when they can own it, they can take it, they can run with it. And eventually they can become uh, just like anything, right? When we train disciples, uh, they can become disciples of that to help other, other people and other Christians, uh, you know, live, live the life that we are intended to live. So that, that, that's called logical body. Uh, it's called logical body for a reason because the body's very logical in the way it does. You just need to understand it. Uh, when it gives you pain, uh, it's telling you, please don't do that. Yeah. Uh, when it starts to tighten up, people will say, well, I was getting stiff while I was working out. You are the warmest you can possibly be while you're working out. If you're getting <laughs> stiff while you work out, that means that there's a problem. Uh, and so understanding those things and being able to then make the right decisions. Um, so that's going to be awesome. I'm going to build it up. It's going to be pretty much all virtual or excuse me, not virtual um, video based. Yeah. Uh, and then that'll be a big help to people. There'll also be a way that they can contact me through there. So if they have questions, they have anything, they just basically say, Hey doc, what do you think about this? And I push something to them. Uh, so that's coming soon. Um, and the other way is um, I do have a, an Instagram, I think uh, for logical body. Uh, so it's at logical body. Um, and if people contact me through that, uh, I will, I will respond. Um, I just need to probably remember the password to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll wait for the website to come online. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll exactly. be the best way. And uh, organizationally, we'll push that, uh, that link out when it's live too. Um, because a big part of the reason you're developing that is for folks who would fall into the community that we serve. Uh, veterans and, and those who who need actually, the help but don't have access to it that's, that's exactly right it's actually tailor-made uh for i'm building it for my military uh, and veteran guys uh, and the reason is is because you know athletes uh, you know and in, in don't get me wrong it's not like the athletes know all of this stuff either they're very very good at what they do yeah. uh but it doesn't mean that they they know how to stay healthy uh, as I think it was Terrell Owens, I think it was, who said, who said, who, who said you can't get a six pack eating, uh, eating McDonald's while he was doing abs, you know? Right. Uh, and so uh, they need that information as well, but I'm tailor building this for the military community uh, because not only have they sacrificed so much, uh, you know, for our freedoms, 
which I want to make sure uh, that we then give back uh, and help them slow down the prog slow down the acceleration of the injuries, reverse those things. And then overall, like you said, make sure that their bodies can be uh, not the non-limiting factor in their ability to come to Christ and disciple. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Dr. Holmes, uh, really appreciate it. I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll have a conversation again in the future, uh, but thank you for the work that you're doing. Uh, it was it was awesome to connect with you in person. Um, it was kind of a weird thing, to be honest with you. I had no idea uh, people carried their MRIs around on their phone. Like, <laughs> but just to watch you work, you came to a program just to see what we're about and to connect with us. Um, but you went through the whole, the whole program for an entire week and uh, participated that way. But once those guys found out what you were all about, there's like a line at every break and people showing you their MRIs, asking for help. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, that was awesome. It's, that's your heart for sure. And I really appreciate it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for this and uh, look forward to doing it again. Perfect. I just want to say one thing before I go. Um, uh, it was an absolute honor uh, to be allowed to go through the, uh, the Mighty Oaks program. I know that that isn't something that's afforded uh, to civilians uh, very often, if at all. And to be able to go through it and actually be able to understand um, what in, into a deeper level of what these guys are going through, yeah. uh, so I can help them out, uh, when it comes to, you know, my side, right. What I, the gift that I've been given on the physical side, uh, to be able to help them to, to come to Christ and, and disciple in the future was a, was an absolute honor. So I appreciate that. Awesome. David, thank you so much. And I uh, look forward to talking again. What an incredible conversation, so insightful. There are so many things that we think, <laughs> but we can't put words to. And uh, Dr. Holmes did that for us, understanding how important it is to take care of our bodies and uh, some of the strategies that he discussed and the reasons for that. Uh, please take some time to share this episode out. There are folks that you know that need the information that was provided that this would be a help too. And uh, I trust that you'll do that. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you're watching, if you have not taken time yet to go and find the YouTube channel, do that. Jeremy Stalnecker. You can find the YouTube channel there or go to jeremystalnecker.com to find this and all of my other content. I would appreciate it if you would do that and uh, hope that that will be a help to you. Again, thank you for your time. Look forward to talking to you next week.